closer. I'm creeping up because I, I realize the importance of this. So if you don't get enough sleep, results can happen. Like what? See it? Drowsy driving. And one in 25 adult drivers reports falling asleep while driving in the previous month. Falling asleep while driving in the previous month. One out of 25. Dangerous. Yeah, that's dangerous. It's estimated there's about 6,000 crash, fatal crashes a year. And that's the people who die. Think of all the other injuries that go along with that. Here's some examples. And uh, you can see how, what drowsiness does and how scary it is. And I don't know if you've ever been driving along and you get real drowsy and then all of a sudden your body goes on alert like that. Woo! Boy, that was, boy, I'm glad that, that was dangerous. So anyway, here's some examples. secret to all of this is what? Get more sleep. Another little secret I've discovered is that if you need to take a trip and you have the tendency that, you know, it's like a sedative to me, the, the wheel, it's, the wheel's so boring. So I have to take some raw carrots with me and chomp on those carrots. Every time you chomp on a carrot, what happens to your head? I mean, you can't do it softly, so it wakes you up every time you take a bite. So that's one, one clue as to uh, maintaining your alertness. But sleep is it. Let's see what the Mayo Clinic says about sleep. If you don't snooze, you lose. It's not the phrase you're used to hearing, but when it comes to sleep, it's true. The brain at night uses sleep to rid itself of debris, if you will. Mayo Clinic pulmonologist Dr. Eric Olson likens the process to house cleaning in your head. It's clear that there must be many necessary functions going on in the brain at night because there's so many ramifications. In the short term, lack of sleep causes fatigue and moodiness. A long-term sleep deficit increases the risk for obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and more. So, how much shut-eye should be in your schedule? The National Sleep Foundation says, as a general rule, adults should aim for at least 
seven hours a night. Sleep suffers as a result of priorities given to things elsewhere in life. Um, and sometimes that's just due to this perception that sleep is not a very productive time. Turns out it could be the most productive part of the day. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Jeff Olson. When your head hits the pillow, your body can go through several stages of sleep. We basically divide sleep into awake, non-REM, three types, and REM sleep. Dr. Lois Crum, a Mayo Clinic sleep medicine specialist, says the three types of non-REM, which stands for rapid eye movement, include level one, which is light sleep, level two, intermediate sleep, and level three, deep sleep. Our heart rate and our breathing really slows down. And that just allows the body a chance to recover from a busy day. The final stage is REM sleep, which is typically when you dream. Things speed up, except a person cannot move if they're paralyzed. And that's actually felt probably to be a rinsing function, to clear the brain of toxins and byproducts. Dr. Brown says not everyone goes through all the stages, but in general, people alternate between several different levels of non-REM as well as REM sleep every night. So when we sleep, we're not just dreaming and wasting time. Our bodies are designed to use that time to stay or get healthy. Several processes are happening as we sleep. According to the National Sleep Foundation, such health benefits as muscle repair, memory consolidation, and release of hormones regulating growth and appetite <coughs> are happening. This prepares us to concentrate and make decisions for all time uh, activities for each day during the day. As we sleep, we go through several stages of sleep, and these stages repeat throughout the night in about 90 minute cycles. Our bodies are, as the psalmist writes, fearfully and wonderfully made. And so the, the Fitbit uh, has a sleep part to it, and I wear it to bed at night. And so I come up with a graph like this after the night. It lets me know how many, you know, what stages, I, how, much, how, how long I was awake during the night, how much time I spent in each stage. And this is really you see the, the numbers there, 5 to 10% of the night is uh, spent awake. And that person, I don't know, got 4%. Boy, that, that was something else. And then the REM, the rapid eye movement when you have your dreams, is about 20 to 25%. And then the deep sleep is about the same, 20 to 25%. You uh, have light sleep, intermittent light sleep for about 50% of the time. And so, imagine a maintenance crew working during the light stage, and that's 50% of the night, right? Body maintenance is at work during light sleep, keeping a perfect balance, balance a homeostasis of all bodily functions and hormones. Light sleep is important because it comprises about 50% of the sleep each night. And with the lack of sleep, several hormones that affect weight will not be in balance, such as leptin, ghrelin, cortisol, and growth hormone. So in light sleep, body maintenance is occurring by regulating metabolism. You can just imagine this uh, maintenance crew working during the light, light stage. And so you have this basal metabolic rate during normal sleep the metabolic rate is reduced by about 15%. And the amount of energy, the calories, that the body burns to maintain itself is called metabolism. And so that is why my basal rate on my insulin pump, I have it about half what I have during the day. You have what you call a basal, which is a background type insulin, and then the bolus, which is what you take to cover the carbs for the meal that you eat. But the basal is just there to help you with all, you know, the body organs and all that. It needs energy. So at night, it's reduced by about 15% when you're sleeping. 
And so that's why I get, have about half, I don't need as much energy during the night as I do in the day. So picture a, a person's tense arm muscles holding up a shield to deflect incoming harmful arrows. During deep sleep, the immune system is strengthened. Growth hormone is secreted, which results in cellular cells rebuilding and repair. This is also the time the body uses for muscle development. And so in deep sleep, the body secretes growth hormone that promotes the immune system and builds and repairs muscles. And so that is about maybe 25% of the night of sleep. Uh, if I get 25%, I feel like I'm lucky. Get more like 15 to 20%. And then picture a profile of a person's brain with colorful lights going off and on within the brain. Processing and storing information happens during the REM, the rapid eye movement stage of sleep. Vivid dreams occur. And so the body is relaxed and the volunteer skeletal muscles are turned off. These. I'm telling myself to lift up my arms right now. Those are turned off. It's almost like you're paralyzed. And maybe that prevents acting out those vivid dreams. Sometimes if you, you, you're falling off a cliff or something. Well, you wouldn't want to actually get up and go to the wrong place and, and hurt yourself. So it's almost like you're paralyzed then. If deep sleep is about the body, REM sleep is about the brain. Mental restoration is taking place so that you can clearly think and decide during the day. So in REM sleep, the body restores your nervous system, processes information, and stores memories. Now, how do, how do you wake up after a night's sleep? Are you groggy and you feel like you haven't slept? Or do you wake up refreshed? I found my Fitbit health tracker very beneficial for keeping me aware of the kind of sleep that I'm getting. It also identifies how much of the night I actually was asleep and how much of the night I was awake. And so this helps me plan my schedule for when to go to bed and then when to get up so that I can get an adequate amount of sleep. Now, I already mentioned to you I'm not getting the seven hours. And uh, I'm not getting the average Fitbit six hours and 38 minutes. But I'm getting close. I'm getting close. And so this helps me to schedule that. So maybe it's telling me, maybe you're, you, can, you can tell me, well, maybe you ought to be going to bed a little bit earlier. Maybe I should. That might make a difference. There's a proverb that says, the plans of the diligent lead to profit. That is health or more sleep. <laughs> as surely as haste leads to poverty. So what happens when you can't get enough sleep? Here's one of the things that happens. You're not giving your heart enough time to rest. So it can become, it can become fatigued. And you know what happens if that happens? Well, you could, the, the end result could be that you have what? Like that person, what would you call that? High blood pressure. In a study of shift workers with irregular sleep, researchers found that the volunteers had definite metabolic disturbances that are clearly linked to insulin resistance. Sleep more and you'll eat less and weigh less. This is true for a number of reasons. First, in our society with readily available foods and beverages, the longer we're awake, what does that mean? We could have the temptation to do what? Eat more, especially in the evening. Snacks in the evening, not a good idea. And then there's physical health. It's also impacted by sleep deprivation. There is an impairment of hormones that relate to appetite. Less leptin, the feel full hormone is released and more of ghrelin 
Uh, that's the still hungry hormone. The way I remember that is that the ghrelin has an H in it. The hunger hormone. Well, if you don't get an adequate amount of sleep, sleep deprivation, you tend to produce more of the ghrelin, less of the leptin. Well, that's not a good idea. You always go around feeling hungry, don't you? So the big temptation if you're going to try to lose weight is you've got a roadblock. You always seem like you're hungry. And another study also revealed that cortisol levels increase the next evening after just one night of sleep loss causing insulin resistance. Cortisol is a counter-regulatory hormone that whenever insulin, another hormone, gets circulating, it tends to make the effectiveness of it less powerful. And so you need more of it. You've got a resistance to the insulin that you're producing, and if you can't take extra insulin like, like I do with a pump, then that makes it very difficult, and it results in higher blood sugars. So it's important. Oh, another thing that happens is there's an increase in inflammation with the lack of sleep. So uh, that's another helpful result of more sleep. When serotonin is depleted from lack of sleep, the result is an increase in pain sensitivity as well as an increased feeling of anxiety, malaise, and even depression. So how does your body increase its serotonin production? Well, by telling you you need to eat more food and the sweet kind more carbohydrates. Does that sound like that's an effective way for blood sugar control? You see, this is the end result of a lack of sleep. Sleep is so important. Uh, in my first book I wrote about diabetes control, I think I might have mentioned it briefly if I did that. But in my, the last two books I've written, I have chapters on it because I realize how important it is for blood sugar control and diabetes management and all of that. Now, is what this person doing going to help her get to sleep? Just right before you go to sleep, you're, you're gonna be looking at your phone? Yeah, you gotta check all your text messages and all that, really? Well, here's a little video that kind of explains this. Prove your sleep in seconds. Do you use a smartphone, tablet, or computer just before you head to bed? Then it's time to change. Smartphones, tablets, and computer screens all produce light toward the blue end of the spectrum, and that prevents your brain from producing a sleep hormone called melatonin. This in turn disrupts your deep sleep and dreaming. So make sure you turn down the brightness on these devices in the hour or so before you go to bed, or better still, turn them off completely. And don't put them on your bedside table, otherwise you'll be tempted to use them during the night. The message is clear, if you want to sleep well, it's time to match the blues. Here's another problem. Have you ever gone to bed and, I don't know, maybe you've had a hectic day, maybe there's certain things that you don't know what's going to happen, you begin to dwell on them, and you begin to worry about them, and you go over and over and over in your mind, and they become bigger and bigger, they multiply, and but you just can't get to sleep. Well, I don't think that, uh, I don't know, does that sound like some weird guy over there in the boonies somewhere. Have you ever heard of such? I mean, am I the only guy that's ever experienced that? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, what do we do? We need to try to focus on reality and on good things. Good things can make the difference. There's a little proverb that says, anyone who seeks what is good finds good will. But evil comes to the one who searches for it. Well, if you're looking for all these things that could happen and you're worrying about them, then that's not going to bring about good to you or goodwill to you. 
Now it's kind of interesting. We look at the life of Jesus, and he was on the Sea of Galilee more than once. And the Gospel of Mark records this, that that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And you can kind of see some waves here. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? It might have been something like this. This is actual a video of a storm on the Sea of Galilee right here. Just kind of look at the waves. Can you picture that boat out there and Jesus sleeping? Well, that's what happened. So how could Jesus be sleeping during such a storm? What are we told to count if we can't get to sleep? Mary do. Sheep. What insight does the following passage teach on getting to sleep? Here it is. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. There will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. But what are we to keep our eyes on? Do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. In other words, you need to be practicing something that is taught in the wisdom and the understanding. Worry isn't taught. I mean, we're to avoid that. But we get a, a clear picture when we really keep our sight on the wisdom and the understanding. It makes the picture clear. You have to go to bed afraid. And your, your sleep will be sweet, according to the passage. And here it is. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to your body. Good news. Now, if you're worrying, you're anxious about things, are you dwelling on the good news? I don't think you tend to be dwelling on the good news if you're doing that. And so there's been so much research done, I've gone over this before, scientific research about the benefits of gratitude. There's you feel more optimistic. In other words, that would combat worry, wouldn't it? And you feel more connected with others, not at odds with others, getting along with others better. You sleep better. Gratitude, focusing on the good. You're more compliant to taking your medicine and following a meal plan. You move more. We've talked about getting more steps in each day even lifting some dumbbells. And also it reduces cortisol, reduces stress. That, that hormone, counter-regulatory hormone, it and adrenaline or epinephrine are two of them, two main ones, but you can get rid of that. And so, do you think sleep is important? Is sleep important for are you just going to bed? Man, I'm just wasting my time. Well, yeah, you're wasting your time in bed if you're just dwelling on the worries. But if you go to, if you, right before you go to bed, if, if you have that problem, you could come up with a list of good things to be thinking about. Or maybe you can open your Bible to a comforting passage and go over that and then pray about it. Those good things that you read instead of other things. So anyway, there's another way to control stress. 
And that is not just through sleep and gratitude, but also water. Water. And you can see water. I've got a picture of actual water 